Welcome back, everyone. I just want to confirm that audio is okay, and I'll wait for that. Um, but with that, I want to welcome those who just joined to today's Zerto webinar called The Death Backup Windows, very dramatic title. Uh, my name is Andy Fernandez. I'm a senior manager of product marketing. A couple of housekeeping items for today. If you have any questions throughout the presentation, feel free to add them within the control panel on the uh, questions tab. Uh, I will get to those questions one by one. If for some reason we go over time and not able to answer that question live, I will make sure to send you an email with both the resources and an answer to that question. Uh, this presentation is also recorded and will be available on demand afterwards as well. So with that being said, uh, I'm excited to be here. Thank you for your time. And, and let's take a look at the agenda real quick. So what we're gonna do today is we're gonna kind of take a look at what are the challenges of backup technology today? What does that mean? Uh, and, and what are the challenges that we all face, not only just business members of the organizations, but the IT staff itself as well. Then we're going to actually take a, a technical architectural overview, uh, looking at what are the core technologies that legacy backup uses? How does Zerto differentiate? What does that experience mean for, for an admin? Uh, and then we're going to take a look at three different categories of comparison. The first one around complexity, we're going to take a look at time, when I say time, I, I speak to SLAs, performance, RPOs, RTOs, you name it. And we're also going to take a look at total cost of ownership, uh, talk about it via the lens of a ransomware scenario. And towards the end, I'll provide some more resources for you, including our labs, and we'll be able to answer the rest of your questions. So with that, I think I'm going to mention something that's top of mind for everyone. Uh, I think this has hit the mainstream. It's not just an IT problem. It's not a security problem. It's a business problem. And it's something everyone's aware of. And that is the growth, the growth of the both severity and the volume of ransomware attacks. Uh, based on the data that we've seen, the estimated cost of ransomware for 2020 was $20 billion. The interesting thing is that there's been a 171% increase in average ransomware payouts over $300,000. And what's most important you know, to the audience and to everybody involved is how much is, does it actually cost to recover? And that includes the loss of productivity, reputational damage, direct disruption to services, not including the cost of the ransom. And that is the average you know, across the SMB and enterprise of $1.4 million. Now, with that in mind, you know, technology, uh, backup technology has existed for decades, and that has been the number one use case, the number one solution that has been summoned uh, to recover from ransomware, right? It's not a matter of if, but it's a matter of when, and organizations are depending on their backup technology in order to recover. Now, we keep seeing organizations pay the ransom. We, we keep seeing organizations lose their data, and even those that are able to recover their data, it takes a very long time to do so. Why is that? Why is it that you, you organizations check the box that they have backup and that they're available and resilient and able to recover during an event, something like ransomware, and then they can't perform? Well, the reason is the solution itself. If you think about the main challenges of backup, uh, we sponsored a survey with IDC this year, and that the name of that survey is State of Data Protection and Disaster Recovery Readiness for 2021. And they surveyed over 500 IT pros, whether they are VPs of IT, IT managers, sysadmins, system engineers, architects, uh, from small to large organizations. And when we looked at one of the specific questions, which was, what are your organization's biggest challenges regarding backup and recovery? These are the four that came up. Backup reliability, cost, restore reliability, and complexity. Two of the top four challenges that organizations face are i'm not confident that i can actually get this data back and i'm not confident that even if i could get it back that i could do it in a speed that is acceptable for the business that we run right if you think about a financial institution healthcare organizations retail any type of, type of digital enterprise uh sla is still important you know the nist cybersecurity framework the 321 rule all of these things don't address SLA, but that's really important. Uh, so when we look at this, there's, there's got to be a reason why backup technology, which has been around for decades, hasn't been able to meet both the recovery and the performance need that businesses face today, especially with a threat like ransomware. And the reason is just on how it's built. What is the foundational technology that backup has? And that's actually taking a VM snapshot, taking a full snapshot of an application VM by VM at one point in time 
usually doing during a daily backup job. And what that means is that no matter how fancy, no matter how evolved, no, how, no matter how much iterative innovation you find within backup technology, it is still limited by the fact that it contains VM snapshots. Those VM snapshots are incrementally copied, which position and provide a lot of issues around recoverability of applications, especially multi-VM applications. And we'll get into those challenges one by one. But also backup technology, whether it requires a dedicated appliance itself, right? Think of rubric or cohesity, or it just requires additional hardware storage and a place to be able to have all these copies of data. Um, and this isn't even mentioning the issues at backup positions around scheduling, around agents, proxy servers, and not being able to be suited for DR. Sometimes we, we find organization, organizations mention that they use their DR solution or they use their backup, um, but many organizations feel that their backup is sufficient for DR. And that's not the case. This technology is not suited for that. And you know, last but not, but not least, what we see as well is the reliance on offsite tape, offsite storage using tape uh, as a means to recover from something like ransomware or anything else. So this presents a lot of challenges. Uh, this is what people see as an architecture that's good enough. Uh, it's what we've always done. You know, there's some improvements on maybe how fast we can move that backup data. Um, but really, at the end of the day, VM snapshots position a lot of challenges, both on the RPO side, but also just because of their impact on production environments as well. So let's take a look at all of these categories that I've described in the agenda, right? Complexity, time, performance, cost. And we're gonna compare the technology that you have seen around backup with what Zerto does with continuous data protection. That way we're gonna compare across all of these categories that are the common categories that organizations struggle with with their backup solution. Now, the first one is complexity. What do I mean by complexity? Well, if I am responsible for a team, whether I am just part of the backup team or the DR team or the infrastructure team is simply responsible for everything. You have a lot of responsibilities. And the reason is if you name all these scenarios, it's a lot for an organization, uh, specifically usually just a team where and that team is responsible for any type of deletion, any type of corruption, the CEO has deleted a very important email, something has either been accidentally deleted maliciously or corrupted. You have to be able to continually restore files and folders rapidly because it's important to the business, right? Think of this as, you know, a traditional operational backup scenario. Uh, but then, you know, from a compliance perspective, you have to store data for long periods of time, especially from a compliance perspective. If you're a financial institution, healthcare, think of a seven year rule where you have to have this data Maybe you usually don't access it, but you have to store it somewhere. And you need the capability to be able to restore that file as well if the time comes. The other piece too is that many organizations still aren't really mature in their in their business strategy for DR is that you have to be able to recover from a natural disaster or any type of outage, right? It's, DR isn't just a hurricane, right? Not everyone lives in Florida. It's not a tornado. It could be a complete outage, whether it's a cloud outage whether it's an, a, a power outage, anything that happens on premises can, is considered a DR scenario. So these organizations already are responsible for having to perform high volume level of restores, uh, having to manage and to eventually recover long-term data, but also having to be responsible for very significant challenges to the business and risks as businesses. And sometimes we would even consider something like ransomware a DR scenario. Then comes, you know, the proactive mandates, right? The, the digital transformation requirements that organizations have. Uh, they are, you are expected to maybe consolidate your data centers. Maybe you are asked to move to the public cloud. They don't know how, but that's the mandate that you have and what you face. Uh, so apart from just keeping the lights on, keeping your SLAs, let alone improving them, you're also asked to continually move this workloads elsewhere. And all of that is encompassed with the constant threat of something like a ransomware attack. So what do organizations do with this, right? Well, you think about, you know, maybe the evolution of your organization and the tools that you have inher inherited. Most organizations, let's consider uh, an organization that has a mature backup and DR practice. Uh, you have your, your backup solution, right? What are you going to be able to restore those files with? How are you archiving this data? Um, think of your, your Veeams and your Commvaults. So that's, that's one solution to be able to do that. But you need to be resilient when you're facing a natural disaster. You need DR. 
So maybe your organizations go and look for a solution like Recover Point, right? Um, but then you realize you need much more sophisticated orchestration and automation for those workloads. And you see the limitations of something like a Recover Point. So then you bring in, you know, an SRM, Site Recovery Manager. Now you're dealing with multiple tools. And these tools are all really just about being able to move, to manage, and to recover this data if needed. But now this is all based on an on-premise environment. You've had a site A and you have a site B where you replicate and you move your data to. Uh, but now you've been asked to go to the public cloud. Maybe you've been asked to go to AWS and now you have to use a tool like Cloud Indoor. So just think in, in, in the, you know, in a five year span, you have all these tools, completely different user interfaces, completely different training, professional services that are required. But all the time as well that you're spending on installation, management, upgrade. And that's on the labor side, that's on the tech side. This isn't even counting the licensing and the pricing situation as well. So this introduces a lot of complexity and a lot of challenges to these organizations. So what does Zerto do differently? How does Zerto differentiate uh, between giving organizations four different products with four different UIs, different billing cycles, different expectations on performance? Well. Really, it's about one single interface to be able to move, to protect, and to recover data. So within the Zerto Virtual Manager, within this UI, you're able to, all within a couple of clicks, restore a file, a folder, or a VM instantly. You can recover a VM or an application. You can fail over to another site. You can recover from long-term storage, especially if there's a compliance requirement. Um, but importantly as well, you can move that data wherever you want whether you're moving just to a, a different secondary location on premises, whether you're moving to the public cloud or even to a managed service provider, it doesn't matter. With Zero, it's about movement, protection, and recovery all within the same user interface. Now, I've just talked about complexity and what that means for organizations. The fact that complexity was listed as a top four challenge within that survey that we did. But here's another really important one. It's time. Uh, I think backup, companies, backup solutions have gotten a break in the last couple of decades where that much is expected. They've almost treated it as insurance, as in, you know, I don't want to be able to have to recover from my backup, but if we do, at least we've checked the box. But we know that's not the case. We know that there are more threats than ever. And so having reliable backup or reliable data, data protection is important, but also not just reliable. We need that information quickly. We need to be up and running. And we need to do that uh, within a pretty uh, reasonable amount of time. So that's where we get into the recovery time and point objectives. Now, as I talked through the traditional backup architecture, right? Think of your Commvaults, your VMs, and, and those organizations. You are taking a VM snapshot. You are taking a VM snapshot that this activity does pr uh, produce an impact on production environments. So you're pretty much limited to, for the most part, performing daily backups. Now this has been where it's always been done, right? You wanna do this during you know, the least network traffic, you perform this backup job at night, uh, by the time everyone gets back to the office and start using everything again, that backup job is fine and it has been completed. We know that's not the case. We know, first of all, those backup jobs doesn't, don't always complete. But even when they do, think about that. Think about a scenario where you have a corruption or even worse, you have a complete encryption of your data, of an application of a VM of a file or a folder. If that happened, let's say at 5 p.m. and you had the right best practices, the right solutions for threat identification, malware detection, you know the moment of encryption, even if you knew that moment, you're gonna lose a day's worth of data, right? It, it, and, and that's because you have to roll back to the previous backup window, which you're in, in, in increments of days, not minutes, not seconds. These are, if you get one checkpoint a day to recover from, that's going to be the best RPO that you can do. That's assuming if you can recover. But what about Zerto? How does Zerto do that differently? Well, first and foremost, we don't use VM snapshots. That's not the way we work. The way that we work, because we've come from, you know, a decade of industry leadership in DR, We've been trusted with the crown jewels, the tier one, the tier two applications of every environment. And in that, uh, we provide granular recovery, thousands of recovery checkpoints a day, uh, five seconds apart. 
how do we do that? Well, instead of using VM snapshots and <laughs> taking a ton of snapshots and, and storing them somewhere and having you know a, a proxy server move that, what we use is simple replication, near synchronous replication that sits at the hypervisor level. So think software only, scale out architecture that allows you to simply replicate five seconds apart, observing all those changes using change block storage, uh, sorry, change block tracking, and you are rep replicating locally, which I'll get into how we do that, to a secondary site. And that brings RPOs of seconds. So that file that was corrupted or that file that was deleted, roll back five seconds. If you know the, the moment of encryption, roll back a minute, roll back a couple of se seconds, depending on what you're comfortable with. So it's important to know that you're facing recover from yesterday's copy to recover a couple of seconds ago. That's a core differentiation of what Zerto does. And, and I want to run run through this in, in, in an even better way. And I want to show you one of my favorite capabilities within the platform, within the replication. And that's one-to-many replication. What I mean by that is a lot of people think that when you're using a replication technology, that you can only replicate to a secondary site, right? I've designated uh, my colo facility, I have a service provider, maybe I'm doing AWS or Azure. And that's what I use, right? That warm site available to me to recover from. But that's not the case. With Zerto and Zerto exclusively, you have one-to-many replication. What I mean by that is that you are simultaneously replicating from lo locally and to, and what I mean locally is I mean to hot storage, to production, to primary, and you're replicating to a secondary site. So what that means is that instead of when you have a corruption of your file, encryption maybe that you discover pretty quickly, whether it's a VM, uh, or a file or a folder, you can instantly recover that locally. We keep the journaling technology local. So when the time comes, if that happens, you have the ability to simply and quickly recover. When you're recovering from local, think of that as a non-issue. Think of that as a no disruption and impact or impact to production. You simply are able to recover and, and sorry, restore locally. Now, while we do this, while you're replicating locally, as I said, at the same time, you're replicating to a secondary site. What this accomplishes is essentially you're providing both the backup scenarios that you're trying to solve for. Think of your corruptions, deletions, even ransomware, and the DR scenarios. And they're happening at the same time, and they're happening with the same granular recovery without impact to production, without the need of managing multi-VM snapshots. That's a huge differentiation. But we know that sometimes you have to recover data from years ago. Maybe even you have a very serious ransomware attack and you have to recover from an immutable copy. What Zerto does as well is as you're replicating locally, replicating to the secondary site at the same time, Zerto is also copying that data and archiving it or essentially storing it within cost-effective storage whether this is a purpose-built backup appliance that you have on secondary storage, or even with an Azure and AWS. And in the case of AWS, you can even store it as an immutable copy. This is extremely important when it comes to ransomware scenarios. You have something that cannot be corrupted, that cannot be changed once it is written using worm and object lock. So it gives you the, that ability and that safety net when it comes to ransomware. And what it does is also allows a lot of our customers to, to easily move away from offsite tape and, 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 and that type of situation and moving over to more cost-effective, reliable public cloud infrastructure. In fact, we even are able to uh, use different types of cloud tiers, depending on now how much cost management you want to have, whether you want to stick to uh, IA within Azure or AWS S3, but you can also move over to AWS Glazer or Azure Archive to really make sure that you're managing those costs, especially if you're storing data for years. But I don't wanna gloss over the fact that what we're doing here that's really different is one, we're not using snapshots, it's not happening. You're getting simultaneous replication of your data to solve for both your initial backup and DR use cases. And you're also getting that compliance level uh, a capability that you need within your backup solution as well. And this is all happening software only. Now, I've mentioned already thousands of recovery points. And that sounds like a lot. How do you, how do you select that? What is the mechanism that you use to be able to select a, a checkpoint? 
With Zerto, what's different that we can really differentiate is our journaling technology. If the replication is what's giving you the access to those granular recovery checkpoints of five seconds apart, the journal is your ability to select those checkpoints. Whether you are failing over an entire site, recovering applications, VMs, performing a file level restore or recovery, you're using the Zerto journal to do that. The way it works is you simply select the application uh, and the specific data within that application that you're trying to recover and select the checkpoint five seconds apart. That's it. Uh, that's the simplicity of it. And what's most important is not just that we can allow you to recover that data, but that we allow you to recover those applications consistently. And just to give you an idea at, at a very high level, what, what are the differences from a backup perspective, backup and DR perspective, uh, between Zerto and a traditional backup vendor like Veeam? It's the fact that we're giving RPOs of seconds and RTOs of minutes, not unreliable backup and RPOs of hours. That's a huge differentiation. Think of this as not just around, this is the expectation for DR, this should also be the expectation for backup. Now I've mentioned something interesting, right? Which was the, how do I consistently recover multi-VM applications, right? All these applications that uh, when using a periodic backup solution that's taking VM snapshots, uh, when you perform a nightly backup job, all of the VMs that pertain to that application are being um, imaged or having a screenshot, or sorry, a snapshot at completely different points in time. So when you actually do have to recover from that, it is extremely difficult and time consuming to consistently recover all of the VMs that pertain to one application at a single checkpoint. Now, RPOs are important, right? Organizations want to lose as little data as possible, but RTOs are what affect your weekends. RTOs are what uh, derail you from other initiatives that you're expected to complete. You know, we've had organizations who we've seen before Zerto maybe suffer ransomware attack and they, they lost a lot of data, but what really resonated with them is the, the fact that they had to spend weeks rebuilding file directories. That is not something that should be uh, expected in a modern organization, but because backup technology can't really change itself from VM snapshots, uh, you're still dealing with this. The way that Zerto does it differently is the existence of what, I, what we call a virtual protection group. All this means is that when you're configuring Zerto, you put all of the VMs, you, you simply designate and click all of the VMs that belong to that application, put your policy settings, your retention, configuration, everything that's included there, and that's it. Once you've done that and you're replicating, all of the, all of the, the VMs that belong to that application are being replicated at the same point in time, five seconds apart. So when that you have the need to recover an application, once you click, click that in the journal, you're only just recovering all of the VMs that belong to that application. That's a consistent recovery of multiple VMs applications that's happening within a couple of clicks, within a couple of minutes, versus a significant amount of time being spent on those operations. The other, the other important piece too is TCO, right? If you think about, you know, backup, having a traditional backup, traditional DR solution within your environment, what does that mean for cost, uh, especially within the long term? We we did a very interesting analysis in the organization around um, what is the what is the TCO? Are there savings? What does that look like when somebody uses Zerto for DR backup versus using traditional backup periodic and traditional DR? And we found that there were a lot less requirements, not just on the licensing side, not just on how much time there was spent, but from a hardware perspective, from how the solution is built. And what we've seen that the reason Zerto is cost effective is one, you're eliminating unplanned downtime. You're eliminating data loss. There's already cost savings there, but it's a simple software only architect or solution, right? It just, it's a simple install. It happens within a couple hours, you're done replicating and you can, you're good to go versus requiring additional professional services and a significant amount of time even deploying the thing. But then you also have very flexible, straightforward per VM pricing uh, and a very effective, efficient use of storage. We have a very small footprint, it's very low overhead. And what's most important about Zerto is that we're not tying you to any vendor. 
it, you're not you're getting tied to any type of infrastructure. You're not getting tied to a specific cloud or a specific service provider. You have the freedom to choose where you want to replicate to and where you want to store your data. That brings in a lot of cost uh, savings as well. And, and this isn't counting uh, the amount of time that you're saving on testing, uh, on actual management and operations when you're consolidating all those tools into one with Zerda. But here's something that I want to I want to discuss as well. And it's not just about backup, but we know, and I've been in you know discussions in, in the field where we've seen a lot of even significant enterprises thought that they could just use a traditional you know snapshot based backup solution uh, to solve for DR, right? So if there was a hurricane coming or a full outage, they were going to use their 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 backup solution as DR. The very same solution that they found that was unreliable and that they couldn't get that data back in time. And what I do want to reiterate here is that backup is not disaster recovery. If you have an on-premise outage, you are not going to be able to restore those backups. That's simply not happening. And most importantly as well, a lot of these DR scenarios, these are planned operations. Um, a city, uh, an organization in Florida knows a hurricane is coming, they're not going to perform the DR the moment that their power goes out. This is going to be a planned move, a planned failover to another secondary data center or to the public cloud. That's extremely important to know. You can't do that with backup. You're not able to migrate your data. You're never, you're not able to do it proactively. So you're, you're not only bringing the RPO and the RTO challenges, but you're not even able to execute on the ability to move that data when you need it most. And that's why Zerto is such a differentiator because one, you're bringing a, a software solution that scales from 10 VMs to thousands of VMs that you're able to protect with no difference in performance. And you can go from unplanned activities, right? Think of being able to recover from ransomware, being able to restore files, folders, and VMs, you know, things that happen within the backup world, being able to recover that data from long-term and also having to fail over during an actual DR scenario. But you can also do the planned things, the things that help you build your business, that help you uh, achieve your goals, right? Whether you're migrating to the public cloud, to another data center, to a service provider, or performing a, a proactive planned migration, Zerto allows you to do that all within the same interface, all within a couple of clicks, the same way that we treat applications on replication, we treat them on migrations. So you don't lose data, uh, you, you don't lose access and you keep things consistent. So that's why I always want to reiterate that Zerto is just one experience for all unplanned and planned activities for backup, for DR, for daily mobility and migrations. Here's um, an interesting example. One of our customers tax layer. Uh, I love this quote from Eric Bradley, their CIO, and says, managing DR and backup in Zerto changes the game for us. We have a much deeper granularity from an RPO perspective and one single pane of glass to manage both processes. You know, they were running uh, Veeam and another DR solution, and, and they found 10% savings from retiring Veeam and consolidating DR and backup into Zerto. They used to take six hours to restore SharePoint with Veeam. Now it just takes 15 minutes. And what I love about this too is that their maintenance windows reduced from two hours to 15 minutes, near zero impact to their customers. What I ask is, you know, check out the Zerto site. We have so many customers, so many case studies and use cases similar to this, where organizations are saving time, they're improving their performance, but they're also saving from a cost perspective. I also want to mention too, it's something that I'm, I'm very excited about was that um, Gartner released their enterprise backup and recovery software solutions magic quadrant for this year. And this is our first time where we're new entrant to the market, right? We've been protecting people's applications for a decade. We were doing it from a DR perspective. We've been for the last three years building out a full comprehensive backup solution with the same trust and performance you get in DR. And that's why we're so excited to be already included in the magic quadrant as well. Uh, really validating our vision, our ability to execute and, and our ability to displace the legacy backup solutions uh, that exist today. So stay tuned, take a look at those resources as well and, and you'll see what exciting news Zerto has coming up. But with that, I wanna leave you with some more resources as well, um, especially if you have other members of your organization, maybe there's somebody else who manages backup or DR. Um, take a look at the Gorilla Guide to Continuous Backup and Recovery. It really gives you the, the 
mindset and the day to day of a backup admin, what they go through, uh, what are their responsibilities and how Zerto can help them change that, how Zerto can help them improve their performance, make their lives easier as well. And if you want to take a look at how Zerto fares against, you know, the backup solution you have today, uh, take a look at our competitive deep dive, Zerto versus traditional backup white paper. These are excellent and the site contains so much good information on the backup side. Now with that, I want to thank you for your time. I'm going to take a look at the questions now uh, and make sure that we're able to answer them. So hold on for a couple of seconds. I got a really good question here from James where he said, can LTR storage be at a third separate location, non-production and non-DR site? Yes. So James, for example, let's say that you are replicating to AWS, that's your DR site, but you want to keep your LTR storage in Azure, you have every right to be able to do that. Um, that gives you an ability to, you know, maybe even have multiple copies in different locations when you think three, two, one. Uh, there are cases where we even have um, customers who keep multiple uh, LTR repositories. They want more copies of that data. They want two offsite instead of one. They'll use AWS and Azure or a secondary site, uh, PBBA and a public cloud. So those are really important to note as well. I got a few other questions on the hypervisor side and Zerto works with vSphere and Hyper-V. So those are really important as well. Um, and here's another important one too from Pete, are Zerto restores mount points or original location? When you're performing a specific restore with Zerto, you are restoring to the original location of production. Uh, that's a really important piece there that, that Zerto differentiates as well. So here's an inter interesting one with Ryan. Does Zerto do any native dedupe? We do compression, but the way that we approach it is uh, the deep dupe that you're going to have on primary storage and, and whatever solution you're using is going to be more effective than what any backup DR scenario can give you. So we allow you to use source side deduplication to solve for, for those issues as well. Um, that's a great question, Ryan, and we can get into the sizing component, but one of the um, what I would call capabilities that we have for non-customers is you can actually use Zerto Analytics, the, the planner, the resource planner tool to put your information on there, you know, install a VM uh, within a VM, and you're able to see all of your resource requirements, disk size, uh, journal size, uh, WAN requirements, everything that you would expect and you would want to know, if I were to run Zerto for this amount of time, what would that take? You're able to do that. So I highly suggest that you take a look at the resource planner and I'll make sure to send you a link for that as well. So one of the things as well that comes always comes up is the uh, licensing piece, right? Um, because I've talked about Zerto for backup, Zerto for DR migrations, but when you purchase a Zerto license, uh, you get all of those capabilities in one. It's not different SKUs. You're not negotiating for all, all three. You're simply getting all those capabilities within one as well. So that's an important distinction as well um, to note. And another question too is around workloads, right? Everything that I've spoken about today is from the context of virtualization. Uh, but Zerto does deliver backup and recovery for SaaS workloads. Think, you know, Microsoft Teams, Salesforce, but also, um, Data protection is code. What I mean by that is being able to protect KH, your Kubernetes applications, those containerized applications. Zerto sort of has a purpose-built native solution for that as well. I'm gonna continue um, moving on to these questions and I'm not gonna be able to get to all of them, but I do promise I will uh, answer via email. I see one from Jafar here. This is an interesting one all around, you know, what happens if the backup or the Zerto system gets um, encrypted and you have a, an infection that's being replicated? Um, with Zerto, one thing that we have that we allow organizations to do is we have an on-demand sandbox. This on-demand sandbox can be used for testing, patch management, you name it. But the, the most important 
um, capability from that context, Jafar, is that you're able to isolate that data, test it for integrity, make sure that it's not corrupted, and then roll back to the production. If that data is corrupted, then you would use your immutable copy in order to restore or perform that recovery, because we know that's a safe copy. So think of making sure that Zerto is configured, hardened correctly, that you test that data before you roll back to production. And if you test it and it's, there's an integrity there, you would use the immutable one as well. Um, these have all been really good questions. I know I'm probably gonna get a few more, but with that in mind, what I'll do is I will make sure to email you with more resources, um, especially those folks who added around the sizing, around how does, how does Zerto manage all of this data? What does that look like? Um, I'll provide more information and a much more technical answer for you directly as well. So with that, uh, I want to thank you for your time. This recording will be available. You'll be able to, be, you'll be able to send this out. Um, but I wish you all the best and thank you so much. Have a great day.